for the Fermi paradox is that we may have already received those signals, but we haven't realized it. We haven't perceived the signals, or we haven't been able to understand or decode them. In this case, some strange signals from outer space have been received. Their origins are now being investigated, and they have posed serious questions for scientists. The most famous signal that's been detected uh, came in 1977. It was at Ohio State University's Big Ear radio telescope. Uh, and in the course of listening for signals from another civilization, there was this message that was strong, that was spread out over frequency. It, it, it looked exactly like the kind of signal we would want to get from ET. During his work on the night shift on July 15, 1977, Jerry R. Eman, professor of the State University of Ohio and SETI project volunteer, observed the weird transcription of the radio signal made by a computer in a section of paper feed to confirm later that it was the most intense anomalous signal detected up to that point by a radio telescope. The signal of unknown origin had a duration of 72 seconds and reached an intensity 30 times higher than conventional signals and had come from the constellation of Sagittarius. In fact, it was so astounding that when the technician was looking at the printout the next morning, he wrote WOW in the margin, and that's become known as the WOW signal. The computer processed the signals received into a series of alphanumeric characters. It wrote the sequence 6EQUJ5, which has kept the international scientific community on edge until today. Eamon and his team studied the signal in detail. In the end, they were able to rule out that it had been part of any interference coming from the Earth. So during the following month, the operators of the radio telescope tried to reposition the signal, but they didn't succeed. Well, many times in the decades since then, astronomers have looked at the same part of the sky to see whether they can find the wow signal again, but we've never been able to replicate it. So the key to progress in SETI is to be able to find a signal that looks as good as the bio signal, but now to be able to find it not just once, but over and over and over again. Today, the origin of that signal is still under investigation. Another signal which provoked important debates was the radio source SHGB02 plus 14A, discovered in March 2003 by SETI at home and announced in New Scientist on September 1, 2004. Since SETI at home started, more than five billion signals have been detected that because of their mathematical profile or their lack of repetition in time, have been ruled out. Among all of them, the candidate SHGB02 plus 14A was one of the very few that was confirmed again and the only one to maintain a high statistical chance of being intelligent and of extraterrestrial origin. Another relevant signal was the one observed by the Australian astronomer, Regber Batal, a SETI collaborator, who found a strange signal close to what years later would be confirmed by NASA as the first habitable planet, the Gliesel 581 just 20 light years away. On the NASA website, in the section Astrology Picture of the Day, we found an explanation for the signal. No one knows for sure what caused this signal. There is a slight possibility that it just might originate from an extraterrestrial intelligence. Many unusual signals from space remain unidentified. The study of signals possibly emitted by an extraterrestrial intelligence is a delicate matter that requires a great deal of confirmation. First, if you think you have a signal from an extraterrestrial, make sure, check, check with colleagues, double check your data. And then secondly, if you're really pretty sure you found it, tell the whole world. Despite countless conjectures about a possible contact or some evidence that is being hidden, SETI states that we haven't yet received a confirmed signal and makes it clear that as far as SETI is concerned, 
it wouldn't be a piece of information to hide. A lot of people in this country figured that the federal government would cover it all up because the public couldn't handle the news. Well, we know that isn't true because we've had false alarms. And what actually happens is the media are very interested. The newspapers, you know, the radio shows, TV shows, they call you up right away if you get any kind of interesting signal. So according to the SETI protocol, the day they confirm the first signal indicative of extraterrestrial intelligence, they will make the news known worldwide. A fact that, considering technological advances, may occur in a short time. Seth Shostak declared before the House Science Committee of the American Congress that in a couple of decades, we will have found evidence of its existence. The chances of finding it, I think, are good. And if that happens, it'll happen in the next 20 years, depending on the financing. There are sort of guesses as to how many societies might be out there broadcasting. And those guesses run from uh, maybe 10,000 to a million. Well, if the correct number is anywhere in that range, then we should find something within a few decades. So, you know, this is not like building cathedrals in the Middle Ages. This is something that's going to work within one generation if it's going to work at all. If I had to bet when we will find intelligence beyond Earth, I'd say in the next 20 years. And it's simply because technology is advancing all the time. SETI success depends on computing power. What will happen from then on? What will occur when we receive a signal and it is confirmed as extraterrestrial? How would that affect our lives, our priorities, our conception of the world, and our own identity? Is humankind prepared? So what happens if we find a signal? If we find evidence that they're out there, you know, people will still go to work the next day or if they're in school, they'll still go to school. They won't divorce their spouses. There won't be civil unrest. They won't be rioting in the streets. It's just that we will know something really important, that as wonderful as Earth is, as wonderful as our species is, we're not the only kids on the block. And I think it's good to know that if it's true. In January 2010, the Royal Society held a conference entitled The Detection of Extraterrestrial Life and the Consequences for Science and Society. The introduction of the conference was as follows. Astronomers are able now to detect planets where life may exist, and the living generation could see the signature of extraterrestrial life being detected. Should it turn out that we are not alone in the universe, it will fundamentally affect how humanity understands itself, and we need to be prepared for the consequences. Over the long term, if you actually did get a message and could understand it, of course, that could be very transformative. Imagine, you know, giving, I don't know, Neanderthals to keep the keys to your local library. Say, hey, you might want to read some of this stuff. I mean, that would change everything for them. So there is that potential, although I think it's a fairly far-fetched idea. Concerned that a discovery could be close, humankind has slowly started to prepare itself to establish a protocol procedure. Neither a country nor a collective of people would be represented, but all of humankind. There's a protocol uh, called the Declaration of Principles Concerning Activities Following the Detection of Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And this provides guidelines about what do we do next? The most fundamental issue raised in this protocol is before there is a reply, there should be broad-based global discussion. That if we are to speak to another civilization, if we are to send a response, it should be a response that has gathered global input. This wasn't transmitted to the SETI Institute or to any other organization. The message was transmitted to Earth. It belongs to the whole Earth. It should be shared widely. Most scientists agree that a finding like this would alter and transform the status quo in many ways. What would be its effect on our society, our science, our technology, or our religion? So for me, detecting another civilization is a way of coming to a better understanding of who we are as human beings. It would mean a chance to see whether 
the ways of knowing that we've developed here on Earth, our math, our science, our ways of expressing ourselves, our music, our art, are they somehow tapping into something that goes beyond Earth, or are they uniquely ours? The discovery would be on the same level as those of Copernicus and Darwin, and as of the transforming events in human history. However, it will be decades before people get used to the idea that we are not alone in the universe, and its real meaning becomes deeply ingrained, as occurred with the helicentric cosmology and biological evolution. It's likely that our first contact with an extraterrestrial civilization will happen when the Allen Telescope Array detects a message that confirms, at last, the existence of extraterrestrial intelligent life or when one of the people connected to the SETI at Home project announces that his computer has decoded some of the signals of the Arecibo telescope. Then, our first contact will be a unidirectional conversation. We might capture some intelligent message by chance, but it could take decades or centuries before our answer gets to them, given the huge distances of the universe. Let me tell you what my, my hope for the um, impact of the detection of a distant technology would be. What I hope is that we can make it understood to the people on this planet that the only way that contact happened was because, on average, technological civilizations have a long lifetime. We're sitting here as a very young technology, and we literally do not know whether it's possible to grow old, to be able to be wise enough to manage our population, to shepherd our planet, to go forward into a long future, long in cosmic times. But if we find someone else, we know the answer to that question we get a proof of existence. It's possible to grow old. Somebody else figured out how to do it. And I would hope that that would motivate us to find solutions to the problems that we face today. We know that somebody else made it through this bottleneck, this technological adolescence. I'd hope it would motivate us to find answers for ourselves. Today we know that the first contact may occur in not too a long time. It's not easy to figure out what will happen in this first communication, if it will be something positive or harmful to human beings. What is clear is that it will be a turning point in the life of the human species.